Winning an Engine of the Year award is like taking home an Oscar. It's a powerful marketing weapon that shouts, our technology is the best in the business. But here's the catch. These awards celebrate performance in the spotlight, not durability behind the scenes. Many of these engines were crowned kings while still fresh off the production line, tested under ideal conditions and short time frames. Yet, when exposed to the real world, daily commutes, extreme weather, and years of use, some of these once-praised marvels began to show cracks in the armor. In this two-part series, we will uncover 10 engines that once basked in award-winning glory, only to reveal their flaws as the years went by. Number 1. BMW 3-liter inline 6 N54 engine. In 2006, BMW introduced the N54 3.0-liter inline 6 engine, making its debut in the E92 335i coupe and was notable as BMW's first turbocharged engine in a mass-production car since the 1970s. Rather than increasing displacement or adding cylinders, BMW opted for twin turbochargers to achieve V8-like performance while maintaining inline-six smoothness and efficiency. The N54 introduced several significant technologies. It used an open-deck aluminum block for weight savings, a direct injection system for better combustion efficiency, Vano's variable valve timing, and an electric water pump to manage cooling independently of engine speed. This combination allowed the engine to deliver a powerful, responsive experience while also improving fuel economy. Impressively, the N54 produced more real-world power than advertised. Many early 335i models outperformed the contemporary M3 in straight-line speed. The N54 powered a wide range of BMW models. The engine was highly praised, winning International Engine of the Year awards in 2007, 2008, and 2009, largely for its combination of effortless power, smoothness, and tuning potential. The N54 was a dream for enthusiasts, with massive aftermarket support allowing easy tuning to 400 horsepower and beyond. However, despite the awards and admiration, the N54 soon developed a reputation for several major reliability problems. One of the primary issues was overheating, largely due to the extra thermal load of the twin turbochargers. BMW installed an electric water pump to better manage cooling, but even that component itself was prone to premature failure. Another common complaint was wastegate rattle. The wastegate actuators would wear out, leading to a loud, metallic rattling noise and loss of turbo efficiency. In many cases, the only permanent fix was replacing the turbochargers entirely, a very expensive repair. The high-pressure fuel pump was another significant weak point. Early pumps failed frequently, causing long crank times, loss of power, stalling, or triggering the limp mode. BMW issued multiple recalls and service campaigns for this pump failures, particularly in North America, and has also extended the HPFB warranty for affected models, after recalling nearly 130,000 vehicles. Oil leaks were also prevalent, mainly from the valve cover gasket oil filter housing gasket, and oil pan gasket. Today, the N54 is remembered as a brilliant but flawed masterpiece. An engine that delivered exhilarating performance but demanded patience, regular maintenance, and sometimes a heavy wallet to keep running properly. Number 2. Volkswagen 1.4-liter twin-charged engine. In 2005, Volkswagen introduced one of its most technically daring engines, the 1.4-liter twin-charged TSI. This engine aimed to solve a difficult engineering challenge. How to deliver strong low-end torque without sacrificing high-end power, all from a small displacement. Replacing larger naturally aspirated engines like the 1.6-liter and 2.0-liter units in Volkswagen's lineup, the 1.4 TSI was developed to improve fuel economy and lower emissions without giving up performance. The twin-charge design combined both a supercharger and a turbocharger, a rare and ambitious setup. The supercharger was used to provide instant boost at low RPMs, eliminating lag, while the turbocharger took over at higher RPMs for sustained power. This clever forced induction handoff made the small engine feel much larger and more responsive across the rev range. Technologically, this was groundbreaking. The engine featured direct fuel injection, a DOHC valve train with 16 valves, variable valve timing, and lightweight aluminum cylinder heads with a cast iron block for strength. The 1.4 TSI earned significant praise and recognition, winning the prestigious International Engine of the Year Award in both 2009 and 2010, 
and dominating the 1.0 to 1.4 liter category for several years. Judges celebrated it for delivering excellent real-world performance and fuel economy while meeting tightening emission standards. This engine was used extensively across the Volkswagen Group. It appeared in vehicles such as the Volkswagen Golf MK5 and MK6, Polo GDI, Tiguan, Jetta, Passat, Sirocco, and Turan, as well as the Audi A1 and A3, CD Biza and Leon, and Skoda Fabia and Octavia. It was positioned as a premium small engine, often featured in higher trim models aiming for a balance of sportiness and efficiency. Despite its awards, the 1.4-liter twin-charged engine quickly developed a reputation for poor reliability. Premature timing chain stretches and weak guides often led to severe engine damage. High oil consumption from worn piston rings was also common, sometimes causing compression loss. Plastic water pumps frequently failed, leading to overheating and costly repairs. Number 3. Mazda 1.3-liter Renesis Rotary Engine In 2003, Mazda launched the 1.3-liter Renesis Rotary Engine, known internally as the 13B MSP, to power the new RX-8 sports car. Building on the legacy of the earlier 13B REW twin-turbo rotary engine from the RX-7, Mazda sought to refine the rotary concept for better emissions compliance, fuel efficiency, and reliability, while preserving the high revving character that enthusiasts loved. The Renesis introduced several important innovations over its predecessor. Most notably, it moved the exhaust ports from the rotor housing to the side housing, a design change that improved combustion efficiency and significantly reduced unburned hydrocarbons. It also introduced a sequential dynamic intake system, which managed secondary and auxiliary intake ports based on engine speed and load, optimizing breathing for both low-end torque and high-end power. High output variants featured three intake ports per chamber, compared to two on the standard version. Additionally, Mazda employed a jet air fuel mixing system to enhance intake air mixture quality, supporting cleaner combustion, and an aluminum construction for both the rotor housings and side housings. For its innovation and performance, the Renesis won several prestigious awards. It was named International Engine of the Year and Best New Engine in 2003. However, despite the accolades, the Renesis soon revealed significant reliability issues in real-world use. One major problem was main bearing failure. Rotary engines are inherently sensitive to oiling, and the Renesis's compact design placed additional stress on bearings. Overheating was another frequent concern. Rotary engines generate a lot of heat, and while Mazda improved cooling passages compared to older designs, the RX-8 still suffered from insufficient thermal management under heavy driving or in hot climates. Carbon buildup during combustion was a persistent issue, affecting compression and leading to poor performance over time. Perhaps most critically, cold start problems emerged, especially in colder climates. Loss of compression over time, caused by apex seal wear and carbon buildup, made starting the engine increasingly difficult. Mazda addressed some of these issues with updated ignition coils, software recalibrations, and improvements to later RX-8 models after 2006. Ultimately, the 1.3-liter Renesis was a brilliant but flawed creation. Rewarded for its engineering ingenuity, but hampered by the harsh realities of rotary engine longevity and daily drivability. Number 4. BMW 5-liter S85 V10 engine. In 2005, BMW unveiled one of the most ambitious and unconventional engines it had ever put into production, the S85 5.0-liter V10. At a time when most manufacturers were downsizing and turbocharging, BMW M went the other way. Drawing heavily from the brand's Formula One involvement in the early 2000s, the S85 was the only production V10 BMW ever made. It replaced the outgoing 4.9-liter S62 V8 used in the E39 M5, and it brought along an entirely different personality. The S85 introduced several advanced technologies over its predecessor. Most notably, it featured 10 individual throttle bodies, giving it razor-sharp throttle response, and a semi-dry sump lubrication system to handle high lateral g-forces. The engine block and cylinder heads were made from a lightweight aluminum silicon alloy. It used dual vanos for variable valve timing, 40 valves in total with a DOHC valve train, and a sky-high 8,250 RPM redline. With no turbocharging, this naturally aspirated engine still delivered 500 horsepower, an astonishing figure at the time. 
The S85 won the International Engine of the Year Award in 2005 and continued to win in the Best Performance Engine and above 4.0-liter categories through 2008. It was praised for its responsiveness, unique character, and high-revving nature, qualities that genuinely set it apart from anything else on the road. This engine powered the 2005-2010 to 2010 BMW M5, M6 Coupe and Convertible, E63 and E64, and the limited production Wiesman GT MF5. Each of these vehicles was known for delivering a raw, motorsport-inspired driving experience, and the engine played a central role in that identity. But as years passed, the S85 started to show a darker side. While it delivered thrills in abundance, its reliability left much to be desired. One of the most notorious issues was premature rod bearing failure. This wasn't just a common problem, it was a catastrophic one. Worn rod bearings could lead to metal-on-metal -metal contact inside the engine, often resulting in a destroyed crankshaft. Another significant issue was throttle actuator failure. The S85 used two actuators, one per cylinder bank, to control its 10 throttle bodies. Inside these actuators were plastic gears that degraded over time. When they failed, the car would often go into limp mode, and the only remedy was a costly and labor-intensive replacement. Vano's solenoid failures were also common. The S85 was also prone to oil leaks, especially from valve cover gaskets and oil pan gaskets. These leaks were exacerbated by the high temperatures the engine operated at, and often led to oil drips onto the exhaust system, causing smoke or even fire risks if left unchecked. Number 5. Ford 1.0-liter 3-cylinder EcoBoost In 2012, Ford introduced the 1.0-liter EcoBoost inline 3 engine, debuting in the Ford Focus and C-Max. The 1.0-liter EcoBoost brought several groundbreaking features to mass production. It used an open-deck gray cast iron block for quicker warm-up times, paired with an aluminum alloy 12-valve cylinder head for weight savings. It featured a direct injection system, turbocharging with a small, high-speed continental turbocharger, and an air-to-air -air intercooler assisted by an additional electric fan. A standout technology was the low-friction timing belt-in oil drive, where the belt runs internally lubricated by engine oil. This design improved efficiency by around 20% over conventional belts while maintaining chain-like durability, backed by a 10-year or 120,000-mile warranty. The engine also used TVCT, Twin Independent Variable Camshaft Timing, to optimize valve operation for different load conditions. To maximize efficiency further, an electronically controlled variable displacement oil pump reduced parasitic losses at lower speeds. The 1.0-liter EcoBoost quickly found a home across Ford's lineup, including the Fiesta, Focus, C-Max, B-Max, EcoSport, Transit Courier, and Tornio Courier. It was also offered in the Ford Mondeo in European markets. Critics praised it widely, and the engine won the International Engine of the Year Award three years in a row, in the Best Engine Under 1.0-Liter category. It was celebrated for delivering strong performance and refinement from such a small package while maintaining excellent fuel economy and low emissions. However, real-world ownership revealed several concerning reliability issues. One of the most serious early problems involved the coolant hose at the bottom of the system. The original hose design was prone to failure, leading to coolant leaks, rapid overheating, and in some cases catastrophic engine damage. Ford responded by redesigning the hose, but not before many engines suffered irreparable damage. In the United Kingdom alone, thousands of vehicles were affected, prompting significant customer dissatisfaction. Another major weakness was the wet timing belt. Although Ford marketed the belt-in-oil system as durable, in reality, the belts deteriorated prematurely when exposed to degraded oil or infrequent maintenance. Pieces of the belt could clog oil passages, causing oil starvation, loss of oil pressure, and eventual engine failure. Additionally, while the direct injection system helped boost efficiency, it led to carbon buildup on intake valves over time, a common issue in direct injection-only engines without supplementary port injection.